Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I think it's probably a safe bet to say that we here in this sanctuary, many of us, have a little bit to do yet before we are officially ready for Christmas, right? Do you have a to-do list? Have you enjoyed some fun things as you have been crossing things off the list? Perhaps gathering with friends to bake cookies, grandchildren to shop for, perhaps making that wonderful treasured lefse. All of these things that we have as our usual things to get ready for Christmas, and yet it turns into quite a busy list, right? Just pause for a minute and think about your to-do list. Perhaps it's attending a Christmas concert or getting ready for that holiday feast or noting the times of the Christmas services and deciding how you're going to worship together as a family and where. Or maybe it's making an end-of-the-year charitable contribution. But just think about all those, lists, all those things on your list. And now I'd like you to think about something else. To daydream about what you hope Christmas will be like this year. What are you hoping for? Who are you hoping to see? What songs are you hoping to sing? What would an ideal Christmas look like this year? What kind of day do you want to have? More than that, what kind of relationships do you want to be part of? Even more, what kind of world do you want to live in this Christmas and beyond? What kind of world do you want to live in this Christmas and beyond? Our hopes, after all, surely aren't limited to our own immediate wants and needs, but reach out, don't they? To include our larger families, our communities, and the world. Certainly, we can spend five minutes in front of the news on television and understand there are many needs from last year's shootings at Newton to natural disaster relief that is needed all around the world. World hunger, malaria, all sorts of things that are hope in this world, that we hope for resolution of these things. We hope for a better place. Isaiah talks about a better place, a time in this world that it will be quite unique. He says this, he says, the wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. You can almost hear when Isaiah would have said that to the people listening, and they would go, what? A wolf would never lie down with the lamb. But Isaiah says, yes. The Apostle Paul also speaks of a time where all will live in harmony with one another and in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together we may, with one voice, Glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's quite a picture of the world as we do not know it, but a world that we can hope for. With your picture of Christmas hope in mind, this opportunity today is a time for us to put things in perspective, to prepare for that hope, that time, to channel our energy and our resources to those things that matter most, those things that matter most to us, 
to our families, to our communities, and to God. John the Baptist appears every Advent season. And I don't know that he is all that welcome. In the midst of our preparation for our Christmas season, he seems out of place because here he is, this ragtag person, coming out of the wilderness, crying out, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, repent. Tis the season to be jolly, right? And here comes John the Baptist. John isn't someone that you would want to invite to your house in your holiday get-together. He really isn't. You wouldn't invite him to an office party to liven things up. And each year on the second Sunday in Advent, here he comes anyway to talk to us, to tell us some important messages. John's task is to help us get ready to meet the Messiah, to meet Jesus. We cannot find our way to Bethlehem without the help of this man. John points the way for us. The people were waiting for John the Baptist or someone like him for over 200 years. And centuries before, the prophet Isaiah spoke about the one who was to come, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Here was John. John was that man, the one that they were waiting for. His task was to lead people to Jesus. And Matthew reports that people from all over Jerusalem and Judea were going out to him into that wilderness to meet John. They responded to John's ministry. They were touched by his message. John the Baptist told the people to prepare for the Messiah by straightening out their path, straightening out their lives. There was a sense of urgency in John's message. There wasn't much time left. The Christ was coming soon. They needed to be ready. For many of us, when we think about an ideal Christmas, we have a very unique wish list for the gift that we would like to receive. Perhaps it's the gift of healing from an old hurtful memory. Perhaps it's a word of forgiveness spoken or received. Perhaps it's that an estranged family member returns to the celebration. Perhaps it's a friendship restored or a new loving relationship that can be celebrated. This These things are what has our path be not as straight as we would like it. These things have our path be crooked or blocked. So we're challenged by John to give quite different gifts than we would normally think. To give gifts of forgiveness, reconciliation, hospitality, turning the other cheek, and repentance. Pastor James Harnish tells about buying a home near a lake in northern Florida. The house had been vacant for over a year and nature had really taken control. We can understand that too in our land of 10,000 lakes. He says down at the lakefront right beside the dock a massive bramble bush had grown. Its long twisting vines engulfed totally the earthbound end of the dock. It was not possible to get past the bush and onto the dock without being snagged by its thorns. On their first trip to their new property, the harnishes cut the brambles back just enough to get onto the dock. Finally, however, they could no longer postpone the inevitable task of cutting it completely back. 
So they took the clippers and the hatchet and began to cut the huge bramble bush down to the ground. When they reached the ground, they discovered an imposing root system. They hacked, chopped, and dug it out until they had cleared it away as much as they could. It was then that they realized they couldn't get all of the roots out. Harnish reflected several years after removing the bramble bush, and he wrote, I know that some of those roots are still there. If I don't take the ax to it now and then, it will return, trying to regain control of the shoreline. John the Baptist comes each year. Each year in our Advent season, to clear the overgrown clutter that overtakes our lives, preventing us from being the people that Jesus wants us to be. Clearing out our lives is not a once and done task, but it must be done continually to prepare for Christ's coming. John's call to us today is to cut back that which is ensnaring us, to straighten that which is crooked, to smooth out that which is rough, to prepare the way for Christ's coming. Amen.